Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiara, aka Bookworm Babe. And today I wanted to do um, a bit of a special video actually. So as um, hopefully you guys know, this month is Read Caribbean Month. Um, it's dedicated to the fact that it is Caribbean Heritage Month um, in the US. I'm in Canada, but regardless, I'm still celebrating and I really love the fact that we have this month where we can dedicate it to Caribbean literature and different, you know, um, authors and appreciating all these people uh, that are in the Caribbean author community. So because of that, I wanted to do a video where I talk about a really special um, book by a Caribbean author, particularly in this case an Indo-Caribbean author that really impacted my life. If you're Indo-Caribbean, you probably know this book. It is very, very popular um, and it's kind of been like the holy grail for us, in my opinion, at least in terms of collecting stories and information about our heritage and our people that isn't so simple to do. So the book that I'm talking about today is Coolie Woman. This is the book, um, front and back. <laughs> and I picked up this book last year, actually, in August. I had stumbled across people talking about the book on Instagram, just talking about um, recommendations that they had by Indo-Caribbean authors. And um, a couple girls had said that this book was really helping them trace their lineage and talk more about, or open up the conversation, I should say, about where we come from. Because it's not always so easy to find out these things, right? So I had immediately like looked it up and I went on Amazon, found it and purchased it. I think it was around $30, but that is Canadian, so I don't know, it might be a little cheaper if you're in the US. But um, first off, I'll just say, <laughs> I just highly recommend this. The thing is, the book is primarily based on stories and information taken from Guyana's indenture period. The author is uh, Gayotra Bahadur. She is Guyanese American as well. I just want to share with you guys why this book was so impactful for me and why it means as much to me as it does. So, I think it stems from the fact that like last summer particularly I was going through a really transitional period where I was very very determined to learn about my heritage. I was very very determined to learn about where I came from, where my ancestors came from and really get to the bottom of things like I was I was on a quest I guess you could say and I don't know if anyone else can relate to that I'm sure at least I hope many of you guys probably can even if you're not Indo-Caribbean or Caribbean if you've ever felt like you just really needed to go on a hunt for your lineage and for your ancestors and I think for those of us who are from diasporic communities it can be even more of a struggle to get to the bottom of things but I was spending my nights literally like researching indenture researching <laughs> like everything that happened in those time periods where boats were coming from from India um, what years they were um, reaching the Caribbean as well I'm Trinidadian and Guyanese so for me it's a little extra difficult because I can't just look into one country right I have to look into two countries <laughs> and it just adds to the um, complexity and aside from that like I have I've had these questions inside of me for a very very long time pretty much I think since like my childhood and while I had a rough understanding of you know my heritage and where I came from I just didn't have exact answers I didn't have like precise details and it was those precise details that I needed so badly because it was just leaving like this hole in my chest where I just felt like I was just missing information and missing things that make up who I am and I had turned 23 last year I'm turning 24 this year so this is a very weird period of time anyway because you know you're losing that early 20s period where everything's just fun and you're 20 and you're reaching like mid 20s which is basically almost 30 so panic ensues get your life together etc etc 
but I feel like part of me was like in order to figure out where I'm going in the long term I needed to figure out who I was and where I came from before all of that and I this book was basically where some of my answers started um Cooley Woman is has so much information on it and it is literally almost like a textbook it is almost like those annoying textbooks that we had to read when we were in like in middle school and high school and they told you about all of these white people who did whatever and you know elected these bills in place for Canada and America and whatever but you're sitting through those history classes and you're like what does this have to do with me or at least that's how I felt I just felt like I felt no connection to this history despite the fact that I'm born in Canada I, I've actually never even been back to Trinidad or Guyana so I haven't even really experienced that connection as well and I am so so looking forward to the day when I will get to do so but all that history really didn't mean anything to me because I didn't understand what it had to do with me I understand that some of the white people had to do with me because they were the colonizers who came to the Caribbean. So that was, you know, that's nice. <laughs> but aside from that, it's this book was finally that place where I got to flip through the pages and literally see well, there's only one section with pictures, so it's not to say that I saw a whole bunch of pictures, but I got to see um and hear stories and things that just felt connected to me. And that was really, really important. Growing up for me, I grew up in a very predominantly white neighborhood. And aside from that, I had the biggest, like, I don't know, I had the biggest hurdles in my childhood trying to explain to people where I'm from. Because people were always like, are you Indian? You look like you're from India or whatever, right? And I mean, I... I was never, I never used to break it down as I'm Indo-Caribbean or whatever. I'm like, I'm from Trinidad and Guy like my parents are from Trinidad and Guyana. I'm Trinidadian and Guyanese and which is in the Caribbean. Guyana is technically like South America, but whatever. I would just say like, I'm Caribbean, I'm Trinidadian and Guyanese. And some people didn't even know where either of those countries were. And aside from not knowing that too, it was like, they were that question still came back over and over like what are you or if you're Caribbean why do you look Indian etc etc and it used to drive me crazy because I didn't have an answer for that you know I like I genuinely didn't know to explain that to people at the time and as a kid like you're just you just know you are what you are and that was what it was like I knew I was what I was and even it was even more frustrating because there was even people who I grew up with who knew very well that I like I was not Indian as in my parents had come from India in that sense like they knew where I was from but yet they would always be like oh but you still look Indian or oh but like you know people still think you're Indian or whatever and that is so frustrating because it's like people are constantly undermining your culture or you know undermining your identity and basically acting like okay well yeah even though that's where you're from you look like this so you know and that is so 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 frustrating and again that's where tying into this book it just gave me I feel like it helped me with my identity in that sense it helped me figure out more about the women side of the history as well because the book is called Coolie Woman for a reason. <laughs> These stories are all primarily about women and sometimes men are involved along the way of course because husbands and lovers and plantation overseers etc etc but um, I think it is so important that this book was created and the research and history was Got, like done and put into it because there are all these stories about women and the things that women faced and the experiences of women on indenture ships and the experiences of women on plantations and the experiences of women who faced domestic violence which was such a prevalent thing during indenture um, it's it, like 
Our history has purposely been destroyed along the way. People didn't want to record things. A lot of our grand great grandparents only had one name. They didn't even have a last name and that one name that they carried became the family last name, which I'm sure that most um, Indo-Caribbean people and maybe even just Caribbean in general, people can probably relate to that point if you've dug into your family a little. So, so much was taken away from us. Our names were taken away from us. And, you know, your name holds like so much and so much of that identity. And these things, like I said, like they were not recorded. So th the fact is like, it can be so difficult for us individually to attempt to trace our histories, to attempt to go back and try to search and find archives and stuff. I have currently, been on a bit of a binge trying to look into the Guyana National Archives to see if it's possible for me to trace my family, um, what I like, what I know of my family, and I don't know. I've been having the most difficulty because I can't seem to find a website, and the emails that I found all bounce and they don't work. So it's so so frustrating. But again, like reading this book gave me a point to start. It helped me figure out okay these are places in India where more than likely my Guyanese side might have came from when they did make that um, trip over 200 odd years ago and then aside from that it gave me perspective because the author um, she also speaks telling her own story about trying to trace her great-grandmother or great-great-grandmother I can't remember and um, she was pregnant and alone <laughs> on the indentureship that is unheard of almost a woman who did not have male company and who or maybe wasn't even married or left a husband literally pregnant and alone on a ship you can only imagine like the danger alone that that presented for somebody and going to a new place that they had no idea what was in store for them that is scary and I believe that she did give birth on the ship as well um I, like i read this back in august of last year so certain details are a little fuzzy for me <laughs> but that doesn't even matter it's just all of those things are so important it kind of helped me think what were the potentials um potential situations that some of my ancestors were in some of the women were in and then even in terms of the men it kind of I feel like Indo-Caribbean men get a very, very bad reputation. They get a reputation of being drunks, they get a reputation of being um, abusers and stuff, and while those things may have happened, it is there's still stereotypes and they still follow us today. Not much to excuse those things happening. It also gives you perspectives of what was going on, what made people react the way they did, what made people want to pick up a cutlass and like go chop their wife's ear off, which is actually one of the incidents that happens and is recounted in this book. And it's insane, it's not excusable at all regardless, but you see the, the politics that was going on, the way gender played such a huge role, and I think that's explained really well in here too, because the ships were primarily filled with men. Um, they, the ratios were completely out of whack. If there was like 200 men, there might have only been like 70 women. And you can only imagine how the hijinks and the gender politics might have come in at that point. And because women were scarce, it gave them a bit of a power to hold like yeah you know all of you guys want us but there's only so many of us so who's worthy in that sense but also having less women would put a lot of people at risk for a lot of different things and you know assaults and rapes and all those types of things which are also really tragic I feel like I can talk about this forever and ever and ever and there's so much that goes on in, in this topic but essentially I didn't want to make this video too too long but this book if you are of Indo-Guyanese heritage it will give you a lot of really vital information you will get dates you will get names of ships you will get experiences of all of these women um, that other, if not from something like this, who else was telling their stories? Who else 
did the work to account for their stories and it's inspiring in that sense and I think it really kick-started me from that point because from that point I became inspired to then like explore representation and Indo-Caribbean culture here um, in my city. I live in Toronto and I am, was actually working on a short documentary film about that topic before COVID started and of course I didn't get to finish filming all my footage before the pandemic started so I had to sort of halt the project until I guess whenever this crap is over <laughs> but that really inspired me and I applied to a grant for that project I got the grant and I think all that passion and inspiration is really what allowed me to get the grant to go ahead and do the project maybe not even on the strength of the project although I think it's a good project but I think it was the fact that there was the passion and the fire to do it and to create that for this community here and that was I feel like I've been saying and a lot guys so I'm very very sorry <laughs> but that all of that stemmed out of me reading this book it kick-started things for me it kick-started me looking into more Caribbean authors kick-started me into starting this channel into trying to grow my page more and bring awareness to all these things so this book was literally a domino effect for me it started me off on like the journey that I needed to go on and literally kept pushing me forward to do what I needed to do and that I continue to try to do now you know even despite COVID I write a lot of articles um, if you guys follow Brown Girl Diaries you should I'm the editor-in-chief and I also um, write articles on there too and I try to do pieces that are about history I try to talk about things like that because it's so hard sometimes to find our history and there's there's great resources like this but there's just not nowhere near enough you know what i mean compared to other cultures and people who are able to find a lot of information so easily about their heritage but that that is that's my rant for today <laughs> that's my rant and that is why this book has been so completely utterly important to me and if you guys have read this book as well please do comment and let me know what was the impact that this book had on you what were your thoughts on it and if you haven't read it will you be picking it up i would seriously seriously just highly recommend that you do it is such a good read and i literally promise you guys if you haven't read it like it is worth the money and it will really if like if all fails you will learn something new like without a doubt you will learn something you will learn something new absolutely um but yeah <laughs> like i said that is the end of my rant for today i feel like i maybe ranted a little bit more but if you guys are into these little like history rant type things i'm like i'm down to do more for sure uh <laughs> But we'll see, we'll see. So that's it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Like I said, I hope that it maybe inspires you to pick up the book. And if you already have it, then definitely let me know what your thoughts were about it. Because I would really love to hear um, if anyone else had the same sort of experience or like awakening that I did after reading this. So we'll see you guys next week in my next video. I appreciate everyone who has been watching, liking, subscribing. It all means a lot to me to know this channel has been useful and helpful to others as well. So more stuff coming out very soon. See you guys. Bye.